how are you? Is everybody okay? Friends and family all safe? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Lay low, you know, got to do our, uh, you know, try to help and do the best of it, you know, see if we can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting, interesting times, right? I mean, crazy, really, what's going on. Every, everything, I mean, the virus, what's, you know, going on in terms of the protests, which I think had to happen at some point, right? I, I think yeah, no, be. I know. It's... Uh, it seems like the perfect storm, right? Like yeah. everything in, in one year, it's uh, unbelievable. Yeah. It's really scary, but... Uh, I, I kind of, I've got like a hope and I, and I think, you know, I'm always an optimist. I hope when we look back at this in the future, like when we look back at this piece of history, that it, we look at some of the good that came out of it, right? Like the good sides of humans, how people stepped up to help each other rather than, you know, any of the negative, uh, that would be nice. <laughs> I hope so, for sure. <laughs> That'd be everybody gonna look at 2020 like the worst shit year of the fucking century. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's it's funny. I mean, like you've just got to. The thing about life is, it, it's like everyone's already looking forward to like, oh, wait till next year when we've got a vaccine and we can do this and this. And I'm like, well, you know, we're still alive now. There's still stuff to do. It's not like you know, it's not yeah. like World War Two where people were getting you know, bombed and killed. It's just, you have to be in the house. There's still things you can do in there. <laughs> I know. And where are you, where are you guys at? Chicago. Chicago. Um, yeah. So we're in, um, we live in sort of West Loop, uh, downtown, just outside of downtown Chicago. So I'm kind of glad we, we moved out to this apartment last year. Um, otherwise the one we'd been living in was right downtown. It was a one bed with no balcony or anything. So no outdoor space. We would have gone nuts if we were stuck in there, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, at least now we've got a little bit of space outside uh, so we can get out of the sunshine. And I've been uh, I've been running just, just to get out of the house, really. <laughs> Plus, Kirst's taking up baking, so she's baking cookies and cupcakes all the time, so my stomach oh. is getting bigger and bigger. So, like, <laughs> yeah, we all, right? Yeah, yeah like, we got <laughs> Spending so much time. We're all cooking more, I think. Like, I've been yeah, yeah, absolutely. down a storm, too. It's fun. Yeah. That's um, but th thanks for jumping on to do an interview. I, I've been, uh, you know, since we started at Loud Hiller, I, I've, I've been meaning to, we've been meaning to sort of get in touch with you guys to talk because we love, like, we love the band. So um, it's, it's great to get a chance to sort of chat with you. And, yeah. and I wanted to sort of start off because... I know whenever I've, I've read about you, like when, when I very first saw you play was Jules Holland in the UK when you guys did Jules Holland. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, um, listening to you play guitar. And, and I've, re I've read a bit in interviews you've talked about, you know, growing up in Sweden and you were like a pro skateboarder, right? And then you yeah. had that injury and it was at that point that you took up guitar. So that was sort of 13 years old. What were you listening to? At the time? I mean, what, what triggered you to pick up a guitar? Were you family musical? Or? Um, I think, you know, rock music, to, or like here, you know, at that time we could, it was very limited how you could hear, you know, someone had bought a record or, or yeah. And, you know, I, in Sweden, I think there was like one radio station that played music, you know, and, and uh, uh, so it's very limited. And I, I, I mean, I obviously, I, I think the first time I really felt like rock music had a, like some weird effect on me was probably Beatles, She Loves You. <laughs> it was really weird. Like I heard yeah. that and I, I was just something about them screaming and like, like when they were singing it and, and it was just something so uh, rough, rough around the edges kind of vibe about that I really liked. Yeah. But, um, and you know, I, you know, we can talk about Hendrix and all that stuff, but I think when I, I had picked up a guitar and like, I, like you said, about the, it from the injury, yeah. skateboard injury, and I, I really wanted a guitar. And I remember went going over to um, a friend's house and he had bought a Van Halen record. It was, uh, I think it was Women and Children. For, I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah. bad at Van Halen, I'm not sure. It was a green cover and on there. And I just couldn't believe like the sound of the guitar and, and 
and I in in my little hometown there it was like a record store where you could buy used records. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, I knew so little about music and who I should listen to. And it was really cool because I walked down there and there was this old man having, you know, sitting smoking cigarettes all the time and selling old records. And yeah. And I asked him, I think I I probably went down there to try to buy that Van Halen record. Yeah. And uh and he said, you shouldn't listen to that shit. You should listen to like this stuff. And like, and he gave me a Rory Gallagher. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And we're not getting, he sold it to me. And I, you yeah. know, it was super was used record. And I loved it. I ended up listening so much. You know, I had a little Telefunken uh, turntable. Yeah. When you take, took the lid off, there's like one mono speaker. And, yeah, and, exactly. And, right. and, uh, yeah. And yeah, just played records on that. So Rory Gallagher was a huge impact. And uh, and I had an old record with uh, Jimi Hendrix jamming with Curtis Knight. Yeah. And I really liked that he played like old Beatles tracks and stuff. And it was actually a troublemaker last year. I ended up giving, found that album. <laughs> so I have that album now, which is oh, pretty nice. amazing. It's so, it was so hard to find. So it's pretty cool. Cause it's not on Spotify or anything like that. Yeah, so. yeah I, I love it. <laughs> I hadn't listened to much Rory Gallagher. We have a, a sort of a friend over here who's a musician called Davey Knowles, and he, um, he's been playing with, uh, it's called Band of Friends, and it's Rory Gallagher's old bass player and, and drummer. They yeah. tour, and um, I, in fact, in the UK and in Europe when they tour, it's, I'm not sure that it's not a Swedish, I, I'm, that's bad, I should know. The guitarist that tours with them in Europe, I can't remember where he's from, but they wanted to do a US tour and they asked Davey to, to play. And um, he is a huge Rory Gallagher fan. And I actually didn't know much of Rory's music. And it, it shocked me like how raw it is when you hear him play. It's really yeah, yeah. That, that, that like, it, it yeah. aggressive, like blues rock. I, I like it. And, yeah. and was it like that kind of thing? Or did you go, I mean, cause he's very blues. Um, influence you, you sang a lot of your solos and things like that half back to sort of older blues than that even w was there anything like back further than that that you were listening to uh i don't think at the time i mean now it's you know since we started the band and like 10 or the last 10 15 years i think i've been going down the rabbit hole a lot more about old music you know when you know like i it was so hard to find uh, you know, like when I grew up, there was no YouTube or yeah. anything. You had to yeah. try to relate to magazines and talk to older guys and know. And, you know, uh, there was a very blues oriented city, Malmo, Sweden. Is, uh, uh, thank God. It was like had a lot of music culture and a lot of yeah. the older musicians there were listening to cool old blues, blues music. So, I, I mean, I, I at the time, I knew very little about it. I just, I knew, I knew it, it vibrated with me, you know. I yeah. liked something about it and the, the rawness of, uh, you know, guitar and, and, and the whole feel of it. And I don't know, I was just on a constant search, you know. And then, yeah. I mean, obviously now with, with how we can look up things, it's amazing, you know. I mean, it's almost like too much because you yeah, can't it kind of get is. like fuck, <laughs> it's so much. I mean, even my God, like I mean, even music history to turn to, to all these old style type. You know, to me, I think Muddy Waters. You know, in yeah. the last twenty years, is something I really relate to. I I, I don't know why I like yeah. it. There's something about that attitude that feels really good. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of nice. I agree. I think I've spoken on a few interviews recently because since we came over here, I had that same feeling of it, it was be getting a bit too much in terms of having everything at your fingertips or being able to just make lists of what you wanted to hear. And, and I, so then I've gone back to, to like vinyl and listening to stuff because it's a different... It, uh, I mean, pe I've said like people talk about the sound of it and there's something to that, I think, but also it's just a bit more of an experience, you know, putting a record on and listening to it from the beginning to the end, the way the band recorded it. I kind of like that um, wow. experience of listening to music and you, f and you find a ton of tracks that you would never probably listen to otherwise. Um, I, doing that. I, 
I mean, that was our whole attitude with Vintage Trouble when we yeah. started it, you know, it was really to, I mean, we were not like, oh my God, we have to play in all amps and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the fact of us going down and, and really just playing live and I mean, all the Bomb yeah. Shelter sessions was done live together. Yeah. I think, I mean, some of the songs Ty even sang right there when we played, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, we're, yeah. and, uh, it, 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 that album it comes across so much that's a it, it's it's got the feel of a live album like it, it, it as though it was recorded in a venue and i know it was in the studio but yeah it was just i, I was going to ask you about that actually because it, it was obviously just you guys playing as a band in the room right and no, no tracking effectively or minimal no oh, nothing no i mean it wasn't really meant to be an album originally we were we had been playing for a while together and a friend of mine owned, owned that rec recording studio at the time. Yeah. Called the Bomb Shelter Studio. So yeah. that's for the, and it's actually Eric Kretz from uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Um, I was working with him on some other stuff before Vintage Trouble. And, and uh, you know, I called him and said, I started this new band. And I told him, could we come down and just set up and just yeah. track for a day? And, and because we wanted to hear how it sounded, you know, we got really lucky. It was, uh, yeah. we put in, um, I mean, that album was done in two days, mixed. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, the, it, it lived with us for a long time. It's still living with us, of yeah, course. Yeah. And, uh, we just had a 10th anniversary of the record not long ago, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, 10th anniversary, because right? that was 2011 when you. Well, we made the album 2010, so... 2010, then released Yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. And how, wow. so how long were you, I'm sorry? Uh, what, it was, how long were you playing together before you went in and recorded it? You did quite a uh, bit of live stuff, didn't you, right before? Uh, about, we had been together for about three months. Okay. We had gone, uh, we started doing live shows after just three weeks together and... and uh, and I, you know, it went fast. We, uh, we had, a, a Ty and I had worked prior to Vintage Trouble. So yeah. there were some songs in the works, or, which really helped. Because sometimes yeah. when you put a band together and you start from scratch, you know, yeah. it's six, six months a year to get it together, you know. But luckily we had so many, so many songs to kind of, start working in you know we had early demos of a lot of the songs from bombshell sessions already so it really worked out it's it's funny isn't it that kind of there's always that intangible with a band when it just works because obviously you guys were playing in another band at the time and you the, so the two of you were there and then you know obviously once you brought in rick and richard there was just something that clicked clearly i mean three months and then you record a record in two days um, they, yeah. just, they just worked and it's there's always that kind of you know just intangible piece with the personalities fitting right and the right people at the right time I guess yeah I mean it's always a dream to make that happen you know even si ever since I was a little kid you know like we yeah. were talking I started playing guitar I always dreamt of being in a band you know yeah. there was something about I mean it's cool you know try to be a fancy musician and all but there was yeah. something about being part of a band, you know, like, like a guy, like gang, a you know, and you, when you walk in the room together, they all know you're a band. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about that I really still love, you know, I think that's great. And, and I, uh, it's, it's, I, I always liked band bands too, you know, when, when, um, uh, when you can start hearing all the personalities and stuff like this. Great. Yeah. Like when, back when you started, was it was that so? When you started playing, I've spoken to a ton of different guitarists. Were you like just upset? Was it that obsession as soon as you picked up a guitar? Or did you like just play all the time? Was it just yeah? It was crazy. I I literally I remember being in school and just running home because <laughs> all I wanted to get to the guitar and I didn't really. You know, like I said, now it's, you know, you can just log into YouTube and get yeah. 50,000 guitar lessons, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. I use it all the time now, too, yeah. Yeah. trying to figure out new stuff. But at the time, you know, it was just, 
it was just exciting to even figure out how to tune the guitar and be like, yeah. I remember calling my mom at work and I think I, I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I tuned the guitar. You know? But um, yeah, it's mad obsession. Mad. Yeah, yeah. I, I love, you know, it was all about electric guitar. Like yeah. it was something about an amp and a, a amp and, and like the interaction, the feedback and like, yeah. it's amazing like it re i loved it i still love it it's all i yeah. ever do yeah and when did you start so when did you first play live did you is that was that a goal for you straight away to get in the band yeah but i was terrible you know like <laughs> really bad <laughs> <laughs> i mean it was so i i my first show i put i had bought a guitar that was it kind of looked like the old Dan Electro in a way a little yeah. bit. It was a, it was really messed up and it was called a Mac 45. I have no idea what that is now. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. But I already then figured out how to plug multiple amps into each other okay. to get more distortion. I remember our my apartment building, the balcony was facing the school and I was on the sixth floor. Yeah. I told everyone on the lunch break told the whole school to come out to the to the schoolyard and yeah. I put all my amps there and I did my first show you know my, <laughs> just make mad noise you know yeah <laughs> and it was so cool I just like that's it I'm doing this man I yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like it so um I guess talking now so in lockdown I mean I, I've talked to a lot of people about you know how they how they're doing you released uh, a new song uh, while the whole lot of you were in lockdown, so how did it how did it work? How did you do it? Were you all just recording, tracking from houses, and then put it put it all together? It always it sounds like a difficult process to me. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, we uh, we're lucky that in today's world, it, it's with technology, it's amazing to. Uh, yeah. I mean, even us talking like this and. Uh, yeah. And so recording equipment is so much better now. And, you know, we're look, we're actually working on a, a whole new record. Like we were supposed to spend a lot of time in, in February and March anyway to yeah. write music. And, and usually when we make demos, we all work at home yeah. and, uh, you know, someone instigates the track and start making kind of a template for a song. Yeah basic track and then you email it out to to the rest of the band and hope that someone likes it yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we were already kind of spending a lot of time doing that um outside in uh, was a track like that i just yeah. I, I i sent you an initial, initial kind of thing to to the band and i i didn't i didn't know if they were picking up on it and or not but ty did and and uh, made obviously an amazing melody and and to the and lyrics to the song and, and, yeah. and yeah every it was it was cool to me it was exciting about that song especially now was that it felt very much like an old vintage trouble like everything went so fast yeah. sometimes when we work on songs now it takes a long it's yeah. a long process yeah, yeah. you know somebody come up with a uh a, a, a melody line or a, or a couple of chord progressions and then you start talking about beat and everything goes back and forth so much but yeah. outside in i think we were all done in two days which yeah. is pretty cool and we're like okay fuck so um it, you know i think it was rick who, who brought up it was like we should really if we're recording the song for real in our rooms and like yeah put your iphone on and record it you know and then we'll take all the tracks and we put it together and and yeah. and, uh, and we put it out yeah it's that great. was really cool and then you know they're obviously the lyrics about it, it at the moment i think i don't know when it got finished i don't remember now if it was in, in late march or april something like that and it, yeah. already we've been in the lockdown for so long and and, uh, you know, I, I, I really like the lyrics that Ty uh, made for the, for the song for it. Cause that we were talking a lot about it, how it feels to be 
uh, locked up. Oh, you know? yeah. and, 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 and thank, you know, I, I'm lucky I have a family and, and, and so I have people around me, but a lot of people were locked up on, on their own, you know, yeah. and it's a long time to be by yourself, you know. It is that, right? I was, I was thinking about the other day, like for me, it's coming into 11, 12 weeks since they shut the office. And I think a lot of people are in the same position. Yeah, yeah it was a very sort of relevant song for the time. And I was, yeah. I was going to ask you actually, it's in, I was interested in like generally how you guys create, because I think you've, I've, I've seen you in interviews before saying, you know, Thai is obviously the primary so, but, but is it the case that it typically works like that? Like the band will all have different ideas. Someone brings something to the table and then you all just jump on it and, and so sort of yeah. pull it out from yeah. that. I mean, it, it has changed a lot since we started as the band. You know, when, when we started the band, like I said, there was a lot of songs that we had done before. And the process was very similar to now. You know, you, you know you're everybody sitting at home and I mean, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> this is basically like I spend 99% of my time in here. And, and uh, uh, that's it, you know, you're trying to come up. With, but at the time when we started, when we started working on music together, yeah. I think, you know, we, we ended up meeting a lot over at Richard's house. He has a recording or not rec a rehearsal studio in the back yeah. of the house. And we spend a lot of time there, you know, music come out a little differently when you just yeah. sit around and jamming out you know like for instance a song that really came out of early stages of vintage trouble in that kind of vibe was nobody told me because mm -hmm. that was i think it it was pretty much done in half an hour in in rich's yeah. studio you know we just start playing it um now you know now everything you know i as you grow up, so to speak, with a band, yeah. you want to get a little more, you know, really uh, find out about small stuff. And I mean, we, because we were jumping on being on the road so much, we just yeah. became a live band, you know. So obviously, recording now has started being a, a big interest. <laughs> I mean, maybe not willingly, but it's like it's the only thing we can do right now. You yeah. Know, anyway. And it looks. In those early days as well, I mean, you guys were, I mean, you were like road dogs. You were, you were out all the time. So between bomb shelter sessions and then when you were writing for the second album, that, that must have been a lot of it was done on the road, right? Or, or did you yeah, take Yeah, it was a little tough because, you know, you, everybody always like, oh, my God, you know, you guys are spending all this time. You can write all this music together. But when you're on the road and, and it's constantly running around, it's actually very hard. You know, we, yeah. you know, we used to look really like sound checks. You know, that's when we spend a lot of time yeah. kind of throwing out ideas. And, but, you know, it, yeah, it, it's a little hard to concentrate and, and really, uh, you know, what are the songs that we want to do? So it did change for a bit. Like, yeah, One Oak for Road, we started noticing that we had been becoming such a, you know, we were just, it was all about playing live. So when yeah. we went into the studio, it was a bit tough. Yeah. I, I have to admit, you know, because we, we, you know, we've been on stages so much and suddenly we're on the magnifying glass with yeah. Don Watts from <laughs> our records, you know, and we were like, okay, it's, it's, uh, you know, we need to write, really hone in on this again with yeah. uh, recording. And so but now I think it's amazing, you know, even like, you know, Richard, yeah. you know, he has a full drum set up, a studio, he can produce drums and yeah. it sound like a record, you know. Yeah. I mean, oh, and I'm sure a lot of people can argue about that, what, what a record should sound like. And we live in new days where, you know, home it's, studios is probably the, the main. Uh, yeah, work. absolutely. I mean, thank, thank goodness for them in a way, right, with what's going on at the moment. Otherwise, we'd be limited as to what anybody could produce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I did want to ask you actually what it, what the experience of working with Don was like because he, I mean, he's such a legend, obviously. And then going from the bomb shelter sessions, obviously a two day session. What was it like going into the Opal? Was and was that record still? Was there a lot of live recording there, or was there more? Was it, road? Yeah, 
Yeah, it was uh, lots of it live. We we noticed. I mean, it was uh, it was an interesting experience because we've been when we came to the studio there at that time. I can't remember what year that would have been. Twenty fourteen. Yeah, maybe. I think the album was twenty. 15 it was released right? so we've been on the road so much and it's been so intense yeah uh, uh, like i said we were in such a live mode so mm. i think it did shock us a little bit when we were listening back we were like oh my god we need to get our <laughs> shit together <laughs> yeah. you know and definitely myself and like you know it was like you were live you thought that just like it's a very different energy, you know, yeah. and, and um, yeah, the majority of it was live. Yeah. You know, I, I know I did, you know, guitar solo overdubs, so we did some vocal overdubs and, yeah. uh, uh, but, you know, Don really wanted to capture the band, you know, like yeah. he's seen, seen it on stage, you know, and uh, um, it's a great record. We were, I'm yeah. super proud of it and, and so cool. We're, and we weren't in a, yeah, amazing recording studio here in Los yeah. Angeles, you know, to yeah. spend, I, I think it was 10 days. Uh, it was incredible, you know, yeah. like, I mean, to record like real superstars, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but, you know, I, I um, it was, Don was, is an incredible man. And what a yeah. musician and what an ear. And yeah, I, I loved, and you know, I'm sure most of you guys know how a recording so you got that mixing console and on the other in then you had yeah. a live room and we would when we would listen back to music, Don, you know, we always had that big hat on and <laughs> yeah. and and he would go in front of the mixing board and stand between the speakers and with his head down <laughs> and and listen the whole song and then if he would turn his head up and say that's great. And we were like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it was really cool. Super yeah. cool. And I would love to do it again. Uh, uh, you know, like stu like real st recording studios like that and spend real time. It, it's yeah. getting harder and harder. It's really financially really tough to do. So I think it's more and more uh, like this stuff, you know. You yeah, like that. Do that. Stuff at home. Yeah, I just, yeah, I, it was, it, it's a shame, really, um, that some of that is going away. But I, I love Don. I love Don. I love watching an interview. He's such a, a thoughtful guy, and I love what he's doing over at Blue Note Records as well. You know, going through, picking out. You know, he's, he's releasing all the stuff from the back catalogue, like jazz stuff. And I've never been. I've always struggled a bit with with jazz. I know it's something that I feel like I should like, but I I, I find it difficult to get into. And Actually, at Blue Note, he started doing these box sets every six months or a year, and I signed up for that. And they're fantastic. Yeah. They're absolutely fantastic. But he, yeah, I was I was just interested to know what it was like working with him because he always he comes across as such a character. Yeah, yeah. Check out, you know, you should listen to it's like old uh, Duke Ellington and stuff like that. Yeah, like a lot of cool. He was into some. I mean. Uh, I, uh, I was trying to look here on my phone because I tried to find there was a song that I heard the other day that I loved so much. Like, uh, I think it's called Jack the Bear. Uh, Duke yeah. Ellington. L listen to all that stuff. It's really cool, man. I'll listen to that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah and it's always fun to kind of grab uh, little ideas from those, that kind of music and, and put it into your own thing, you know? Yeah, like, absolutely. Borrowing little stuff. <laughs> yeah, borrowing. Hey, every, everybody's borrowed since the first day, right? I think, I mean, that's one of the things that interviewing for the for the website is when I talk to people, it mm. always sets me off down a rabbit hole because everybody I talk to will mention someone else that influenced them or something they listen to, and I'll be like afterwards, oh, I'll go and listen to that. I and then I listen to that, and it's like, wow, this stuff's great as well, and it just kind of broadens your, your horizons. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, and I. It's funny you say that because I do the I do the same thing. You know, yeah. I spend so much time on listening. Um, since we're home so much, uh, yeah. every day I'm trying to do, I live kind of close to the mountains here in, in uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. Every day I kind of go on, on a long hike and I put my earbuds in and listen to some podcast or some music. And yeah, and yeah yesterday I even found uh, 
a young girl called Madison Cunningham. I don't know if anyone of your listeners heard heard her, but I I couldn't believe it. Like yeah. she's so young, and and uh, yeah, listen to it and think. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll guitar I'll player, I'll... guitar player, singer, and and she sounds like a mix between uh, Jeff Buckley, uh, Lindsey Buckingham, and I mean I. Oh, really nice. cool stuff. Yeah, I'll give that a try. Yeah. And then, so, and, and that kind of feeds into nicely because I think then when you guys came back after Hopeful Road, then that was a very different, I mean, those albums were produced, right? I mean, that was a very produced sound and a very different sound. I kind of, I really sort of like the fact and in, in, in respect of the fact that the band you guys weren't afraid to go somewhere else that you felt like going. And, I, and it's funny that I've talked to a lot of musicians recently who've kind of talked about the same thing. You know, we, it, you can't just stay in the same place. You can't just keep doing the same thing. You've got to try and push yourself or, or go where you feel like you need to go. Was it, was it like a conscious decision to do something different? Or, or was it just kind of just stating in the band that you felt like, or what was coming out was slightly different in terms of what you were writing? Um, well, first, uh, you know, I don't know if, uh, to me, you do what you do. You are what you are. And you, you, yeah. you, you, you it's, I, as the artist and a band and like, I, do you need to change? You know, yeah. I mean, I, I personally, I don't, I don't, you know, you, you, like I said, you do what you do, you know, like yeah. listen to ACDC, they've done the same record for, yeah. for, for the last 30 years, you know, and yeah. I mean, they have something, um, you know, I, I think it was interesting to, 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 to dive, you know, we, we were, we've been touring so much yeah. as four members of this band. Uh, we get a lot of different inspiration listening to M all four members listen to different kind of music and then they kind of put it together. I think in the later years, uh, Ty definitely has been more of a prominent songwriter Yeah. In, uh, in the early days. I mean, he always been the number one songwriter, but I think he's yeah. bringing more and more like almost finished material, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think he, you know, definitely touched on a, listening to a lot more of modern R and B music, and yeah. and and, uh, and we trying to find a way. You know, obviously, when we started the band, like that was a, right about the time Amy Winehouse, yeah, put in Back in Black, which was an interesting because she, you know, every you know, it was sounded like early fifties music, but with a modern thump yeah. to it, you know. If you listen to those records, they're very produced, and 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 I, you know, I think there was a eagerness to kind of get that modern touch to a record. Yeah, and we had made records. We were just like, fuck it, we just go in the studio and play live, and that's yeah. it. You know, yeah. <laughs> get it out. <laughs> now, you know, I think there was a more of a desire to kind of get that little modern touch to it. You know, yeah. so. Uh, chapter two, we definitely went m massively the different way, you know, yeah. using uh, almost drum machine patterns and, and, and stuff like that on some song. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, you, you got to just jump on things. And I, I think now uh, the new record we're making is a, is a, is a bag of, everything because i yeah. think now a lot of the songs we are going back to almost like old school super old school vintage trouble like yeah. uh and trying to be simple you know to find it's fun now when you can really spend time listening to recordings and and uh find instead of laying down for me guitar wise you know a bunch of guitar tracks and yeah you find like one guitar track that really speaks and do the thing, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm still working on it, you know, as far yeah. as my personally, myself with music, what touches me and, and what makes me feel good about my own music or, or yeah. our music. It's, um, I love simplicity. 
Yeah. And it's very hard to be simple. <laughs> it's one of the hardest things in the world, you know, to, to let a song just be the song. And, and I think early days, like we were, got really lucky with Bomb Shelter Sessions in a way, because we were, we kind of, you know, we, we were really adamant about bringing it down to the core. Yeah. Of just the guitar, bass, drums, yes. vocal. Um, you know, now there's definitely new instrument, you know, the keyboards and, you know, yeah, Ty plays a lot of trombone these days, you know, yeah, yeah. Again, really good at it, really cool. So, you know, uh, he's bringing a lot of horns now into the, to the tracks because he's yeah. just in trombone, which is really cool, you know. And, I, I think you, I think you're right though. It's, it, it's funny about the simplicity point and I was talking, I got to interview, um, uh, Tyler Bryant the other day and we were talking about uh, Kirsten and I had been sitting that weekend and there was a live stream on of, this is, there's a lot of live streams like music going on at the minute and there was a live stream of an old um, like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers concert on there uh, and that was what they were the, the best at right and some, sometimes I feel like, it, it, I don't mean it as an insult when I say you know you watch Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and the music is so simple and that sounds like an insult, but it's not, right? Because if everybody could do that, then everyone would be megastars, right? But that was his genius, right? It was like, that's, that's how to be a rock and roll band. I sat and watched that concert, and I was like, that's a rock and roll band. Watching those guys, it was there. And they would, I, think, I think he was one of the, the kings at that, you know, just keeping it simple, keeping it um, like, you know, as basic as it could be and be all about the song. Um, it, was, it, it just sort of hit me as I was watching it that night. Yeah, I, by far, I mean, legend, you know, I mean, I, Tom Petty, my God, it's, it's so good. And, and, for, you know, his lyrics, even with that of staying, trying to tell a story in the three yeah. and a half minutes and being so cinematic, like Tom yeah. Petty was with his lyrics is incredible, you know, yeah. like, and Mike Campbell is probably one of my absolute favorite guitar me too. Yeah, like, me too. I, all these little lines and what a musician, you know, yeah. and, and him as a songwriter on his own, you know, yeah, like, exactly. like, my God, I mean, he wrote so many hit songs for lots of other artists, you know, like yeah. even, uh, Girls yeah. of Summer is the one, right? But yeah, 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 that's one of his, like, yeah. incredible, you know, and I think that was with Don Henley, right? He just had yeah. a music track and there was no, uh, you know, which is, yeah, incredible. So uh, yeah, definitely. Simplicity, being a songwriter is really yeah. hard, you know? And yeah. I, I, me personally, I, I never been a lyricist or saying, so I love working with singers. Yeah. I, I love making music and, or tracks, you know, I guess you would call that because it's like, you know, you would give it to a singer and they would put their melody and, and, yeah. and, and stuff on it. Um, I, I love that interaction. Yeah. Uh, and I always love working with Ty. He's an, inc you know, and he writes his own songs. Yeah. Stunning, you know, and uh, he's definitely the number one guy in Vintage Trouble when it comes to uh, songs, you know, and yeah. I, 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 I love it. I, I've been dive spending so much time now, obviously, even on my own stuff and trying to figure out what, because, you know, I have all the time in the world now. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it, 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 it's... Uh, it, it, it's, it's a very separate thing from being a musician, like, you know, be a craftsman on your instrument. Yeah. But uh, uh, putting music together, like, it's, yeah. it's, it fascinates me more than ever, you know. Yeah, it really is. I'm, I'm, really, um, I'm really excited to hear the new album now because I think that's what's interesting to me as well is, you know, you guys haven't just stayed in one place. So you, you've seen the band sort of evolve through the EPs. And now, you know, it's interesting to hear me say that the new one's going to have a bit of all of that in it. And it, that's kind of exciting because I, I'm yeah. hearing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I you know, uh, definitely find some, some bit of the rawness back into it. And, and, yeah. and our original roots, what we, when it came to the band, and that was truly... Uh, 50s rhythm and blues music you know the yeah. stomp the that was something that we all connected with as four members and that was 
you know, uh, some like early Little Richard, Ike and Tina Turner. Yeah. Uh, even Ike Turner before he met Tina, you know, all of that yeah. stuff was like, God damn, early <laughs> Chuck Berry. There was something yeah. so about incredible songs, you yeah. know, and talk about another s s uh, lyricist. Yeah, the poet Chuck Berry. I mean, yeah. he talked about all these guitars, but like, listen to his lyrics, incredible. Yeah. Like, how, how he was so managed to put something so quick together. Like, it, yeah, I, and, then, I, and then a performer, a performer like nobody had been before him, right? I mean, that was the other thing. And it, I love, I love reading, I love reading about both sides of him. I could, because apparently off stage it could be a little like a little bit difficult to put it mildly. And I was reading Keith Richards' autobiography, and Keith Richards sort of revealed him. And uh, he tells a story about when he was backstage one time, and he and Chuck Berry's guitar was there, and he went over to look at it, and I don't know if he picked it out the case or something. And he said he was just looking at it, and someone came in and just smacked him in the side of the head, and it yeah. was Chuck Berry like, "Don't ever touch my guitar." <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I but, mean, uh, and that probably come a lot from you know the early days of basically what's happening now they yeah, had yeah to, probably did, know, actually, yeah. i mean if you hear read history books about all those guys who are doing gigs you know james oh, yeah. Brown, richard yeah uh, Chuck Berry, they had they had to be tough muddy waters they yeah. they got fucked over so much that yeah. they had to be almost scary yeah they, like, they, People be afraid of them because they're like, you better pay. Yeah. I fucked over and so many times, and obviously, you, the history of Chuck Berry is famous. You know, with all he had to give away his rights to a lot of his music, and yeah, and even songs that he wrote solely by himself. Suddenly, it was all these other guys' names. Yeah, there, yeah. Uh, yeah Berry, I've, Berry. Read, uh, I've read a lot of blues history, and, and uh, we go every year uh, down to Buddy Guys. Club Legends to see him. He does like it. He still does a residency every January where he plays four or five nights a week. I mean, he's, he's in his 80s now. He still does it. Um, but when he, you know, he was talking about the early days of the club and he was, when he opened his own place and he was saying it was just getting broken into every night. So he used to sleep in there with a gun just to frighten off robbers. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Uh, I'm sure a lot of that energy came from that, you know, yeah. and it just had to be it, you know, but, but we wouldn't, all that music is what shaped everything, you know, yeah. everything, yeah. it's incredible, like, I mean, if you think about uh, American history of, of that music, it, yeah. it, it's what we, everything today, you know, everything. Um, if you've got a, I don't know if you still have a record player, but if you have, um, I would really recommend, like, there's a couple of box sets on top of there, the Paramount box sets. It's like the history of Paramount Records. Okay. And that goes, like, right back to sort of, they've got some stuff on there that sounds like, I don't know how it was recorded, but it's just guys on acoustic guitars, like, very, very early blues. It's awesome. It's really interesting to listen to. Cool. You're right, you know, you can trace it all back to that. You can trace yeah. it all back, back, back to that. It's, it's totally. Uh, and we're on, God, man, we're on about 40 minutes. I just wanted to ask you a little bit because I, I love guitars, so a little bit about guitars. Um, well, actually, one thing I did want to ask you was, uh, you, I read an interview you did when you guys had done the new EPs, and you talked about the fact that because you were recording out on an island, you were limited as to what you could take with you in terms of guitars and amps, and then you went on some of the songs, you went right, like straight in through a plug-in, I mean, is that something you think you'll do anymore? What, how did you feel about that? Is it because you're such a vintage, I mean, you're surrounded by amps. How did you find it? Yeah, I think, you know, like I said earlier, technology, it changed so much, getting so much better, you know, like, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, even I, the song Outside In, yeah, uh, it's a lot of guitars on it. It's all, <laughs> uh, uh, it's all direct DI. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's straight in. I mean, it, I sent that demo. I went uh, to the band, the, the music track, and I didn't really think they would like it, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. 
And then they liked it and I was like, oh fuck. So <laughs> then I tried to redo it with real amps and stuff. And I was like, I actually like the intention of the original any so I just left it. I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I do both now. Yeah. I, uh, it depends on the track. Some of these, um, because the more modern sound, when I say modern sound, yeah. like when you, when you hear on pop records or yeah. uh, modern R&B records, it's a lot yeah. of beat, bass and vocal, right? And yeah. then, the rest of the shit in the way in the back. <laughs> so yeah. it takes up so much space. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I found sometimes when we're working on tracks that are a little more modern sounding, mm -hmm. I usually do DI guitars because it, it doesn't take up so much space in the in the track. Yeah. Uh, uh, and even now, you know, I, I I got way more. I'm way more interested in the. Uh, you know, I used to be all guitar. I don't give a fuck how they put it. So <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, how yeah. you put a track together. Yeah. But now obviously I changed a lot. And I, I even find, you know, with amps and, and, and when you track with vintage amps, you ended up shaving so much off to find mm -hmm. a place for it in, in, in the mix, you know? Yeah. So it, it depends on the song, but I, I use all of it. I use yeah, the DI, I use, I mic old amps. I, uh, uh, there's ways now to even use old amps, but kind of bring it into you digitally anyway. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying not to be afraid of, uh, of, uh, of you going, using every way possible there is to yeah. uh, record guitars. And to be honest with you, I've been reading up so much about it and realizing like even like, you know, David Gilmore and stuff yeah. with so much DI guitar, you know? Oh yeah, well, I mean, I guess everyone's always tried to push it in every stage, right? I mean, most of the great guitarists have adopted whatever was the newest stuff around at the time. At yeah. the time they were around, ultimately, I, I think. It yeah, was, uh, uh, that maybe I don't know if you're listeners or whatever. When we say DI guitar, that means yeah. that basically, yeah. If you don't know what that means, plug it straight into like a mixing board, not using yeah. an amp and just go and yeah. plug and 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 just basically yeah. get the guitar sound and 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 it can be very interesting. You know, obviously one of the most famous guys when it comes to that is probably Nile Rogers that people would yeah. know for his guitar playing and. That was all DI. Yeah, absolutely. So what now? Now your um, your guitar collection's obviously grown. I think since you started in the band. What's do you have a number one? Like, what's the one that you always go to? Uh, well, you know, I have <laughs> I have what's called the number one Les Paul that we have. We started the band with, and it always was the go to guitar. Now I actually put it away a little bit. It, it's got, it's been around for so long. So yeah, Gibson, I actually got a new guitar from Gibson that is kind of just like number one, but uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a new one that's really nice. I love that and I've been playing. I, you know, I always go weird. I sand down the necks. And... Actually, I've got, a, I've got a Telecaster and that, that and it's a, it's a reissue. But the one thing I didn't like about it was the neck, so I had all the back sanded off the neck on my Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. all the guitars, you know. Yeah. Uh, one, one guitar that really came back now for a lot of the recordings is my old, uh, uh, this is uh, Gretsch Custom Shop, a, guy, a sweet dear friend of mine, Stephen Stern, who's yeah. a master builder. He made me this guitar and, you know, I have my name on it. And, yeah. And even the Vintage Trouble logo. That's awesome. I remember you posted about that when you did it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. It's such a cool guitar. And because and, yeah. uh, we, for instance, we were working on a, on a new track now and was really inspired by uh, staple singers. Yeah. So pops, you know, the old yeah. guitar styles. I, yeah. I tuned it down a whole step and got this. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, you know. When you're home like this, it's great to just have yeah. a circle of guitars. I got some, <laughs> yeah. got some old Telecasters. And yeah, oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, this has been around 
this guitar been with me probably almost 30 years or something. It's crazy. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> but, uh, but I think the go-to guitar when, the, when we play is the Les Paul, you know? Yeah, and that's cool. When you... It just works. When we, when we just do in the four of us, it works really well. Yeah. That's the one. I'm just looking at yours. Yours all look relatively clean. I was just, it popped into my head there about Mike Campbell. Um, because he's one of my favorite as well, the way he plays and everything. The one thing that I couldn't get my head around with him is I watched a, a thing about the Heartbreakers and they had his tech there and he was showing the guitars and he's like, and the guy who was interviewing him was like, wow, they look a bit dirty. And he's like, yeah, Mike won't let us clean any of this off the neck. So like all the, all the dirt on the, the fretboard, he doesn't want to clean nothing, leaves it on there. So his guitars are filthy, like the necks are filthy. It was, I was like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but you're Mike yeah. Campbell, so you can do whatever you want, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's, he's incredible. <laughs> I actually got, I saw the very, very last show with Tom Petty. I oh, you were that, we, were, we went to that tour. So we saw them at um, Wrigley Field, which was, at, I think about, I think it might have been the month before. The, the last one, and then he then obviously he died, which was yeah. yeah. It was I I I was there with a friend of mine. And it was really weird because we were uh, um, I don't know. There was something about the energy. I mean, it's obviously easy to say now, you know, but because yeah. it, it, it would as you know, they were doing that's good to be king and and yeah. the audience singing and the way he stood, yeah. Felt, I mean, it was very eerie. It almost felt yeah. like he was saying farewell, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know, just a couple of days later, he had passed. Yeah, it's kind of sad, isn't it? I mean, when you hear that, that he was effectively playing that to with a broken hip, I think they said, or something. I mean, that was what, why he was taking the painkillers. Is because his, I think they said he'd had an injury and it, it had progressed because of how heavy the tool was into basically a broken bone. He, he didn't want to postpone, so he just kept going. Um, which yeah. is kind of kind of the man, right? I think through his whole career, yeah. nothing's ever stopped him. So, yeah. But uh, hey, well, <laughs> well now we, I, I won't keep you too much longer. I know you, you can enjoy your Saturday. Thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. And then um, um, I don't know if I, you know, I I do want to say, and I hope everyone is safe out there and staying safe and and making sure. We're okay, you know. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a very strange year, and I, yeah. you know, uh, I can definitely say for us as a band, we've probably been really up and down for the last couple of months because it's been yeah. emotionally very strange. Yeah, um, I know we all musicians are in the same boat that it probably looks like we can't really. Uh, do proper touring and performing till 2021. Yeah. They're obvious, you know, things like it, yeah. yeah, and it, it, it's it's uh, but we, you know, I just want to say that we're doing our best. We get we're probably gonna uh start doing is some streaming, yeah, shows well, as yeah. well for yeah. sure because we miss everyone, we miss playing together, and yeah. and we can't wait to play some of these new songs. You know, a lot of this stuff is uh feels really good. I bet everyone people will be excited to hear that, and that it's been great watching. You know, you guys have, it, it's such a dedicated fan base, like with the troublemakers and everything. It was great to watch them recording the track, you know, doing their own version of the track. It was, it was awesome. Isn't that cool? I, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I know, have you ever seen that when they made that, the world's going to have to take a turn around? I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. that was just incredible. I was in tears, you know, and even now when they did the video for Outside In. Outside In, yeah. So good, yeah. I mean, troublemakers. I mean, they're, they're bigger than the band for sure. <laughs> oh, you know, they got a fire, an in instinctual fire that is just incredible. I love it. It's really cool. Yeah, it's well, let's let's hope that it's not long. I, I keep saying this on all these interviews. Let's hope it's not long before we're all in like some some sweaty venue again together. Um, everybody together listening to music that first time i've said this to a couple of different people as well it's like everyone's locked in at the minute can you imagine like that first time you step back out on the stage again i'm thinking for like the, the audience and the band it's going to be something special i'd imagine <laughs> yeah i mean this is the longest we've been home in 10 years yeah 
Yeah. I've never been home this many months. I like, you know, we usually yeah. on the road so much. So it's just, I mean, for a while I was really freaking out, but you know, I, you find your ways, you find your ways to deal with it. And, and, uh, and, you know, hopefully we won't be too rusty when we get back on stage yeah. and, and we have all these new things that we kind of, you know, this, yeah. this is the time to learn for everyone, yeah. you know, like yeah. to, to really hone in on your stuff. And, and, uh, uh, it's been amazing for me, but, you know, I've, I've reading up so much more guitar songwriting and, and music and yeah. yeah, it's really fun. Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks again for taking the time. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. All the best to you. Have a good weekend. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.